I know you are excited because you've been begging for their videos on the board. We're right here with Cole Chamber, gentlemen. Introduce yourselves, please. I'm Des. I'm in. A lot of fans feel that they live vicariously through your music. They really connect because it's so realistic and, you know, so in tune with their lifestyle. Do you ever fear that you're going to lose that, like, eye-to-eye, -eye, you know, vision with your fans? No, I mean, I think Cole Chamber is built on sincerity. That's the one firm rock that we've got. There's always a new breakup rumor floating around. What What is the status of the band, and how would you like to calm down your psychotic fan? Hmm? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know what? It just fights. Uh, yeah, every band fights, but they just don't talk about it. Yeah. And so when we talked about it, everybody kind of made a big deal out of it. Mm -hmm. But right. it's like, well, we're just being, you know, sincere the same way our music is, just being really sincere with our fans. You're covered up in tats. Anything new you have? That's Paul Booth. Anything alternative is cool to me, you know? When Meeks came in with a kilt the other day, I was like, yeah, let's do a shot of whiskey. Well, basically, you just need a reason to do a shot of whiskey. Be honest. Yeah, yeah right. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Some more of the crazy that goes on backstage and crazy stories. Cold Chambers had a lot of crazy things happen. You know, I mean, everything from bus drivers passing away to RVs going off the roads. So there's so many stories it would be hard to go into. But anything like you could bring up, maybe something funny doesn't like have to be. Like rock and roll stories? Yeah, like some fing weird ass. We want the dirt, man. We want gossip. We'll bleep it, whatever. I'll I want to hear afterwards. it. Afterwards, I'll show you. You know, this is the third time I've heard that before. And you know what? This is supposed to be like an uncensored. Raw footage over here. Tell me some man. Everything rock and roll you can possibly imagine, Cole Chamber is probably done. And everything that I you, want details here. Come it can't happen. Uh, okay, I'll tell you one. Uh, this girl came into our bathroom once and she used the facilities like uh, and just tore it up in there. <laughs> <laughs> I did not tear it up. You want me to tear it up? Let's order some Taco Bell and I'll go and tear it up up in that bitch, all right? Uh -huh. These people have made the biggest issues of me pooping in their bathroom as if women don't poop. I poop. They don't. I do. On your new album, Dark Days, it really, um, like you said, it's a lot, um, a lot more deeper and, and really, really honest. And it seems like you're exercising a lot of demons. What was specifically, the, like, what fueled the fire for this record? Lyrically, uh, like the last five years on the road, just dealing with the whole business side of everything and mm -hmm. dealing with each other. I mean, it was fueled by everything, really. Why did you choose um, Ross Hogarth, H Hogarth yeah. to, to uh, produce since he's known for more poppy stuff like Jewel and yeah. stuff like that? I don't know. There was something that he knew about what we were trying to do. He had a certain something. He said, yeah. he said, you know what, we're, we're going to, you want to do something raw right now. It's like, I've done Jewel, I've done Black Crows, I've and you guys want to do this and you want to make kind of a brave move, I do not mind doing it with you. He really pushed, really pushed each one of us, I mean, to our, to our limit. I know you hear a lot of bands say that, you know, my producer pushed me to tears, so man. this guy didn't just do that, he really kind of pushed every emotion out of you. And uh, it, was, it was great to work with somebody like that who's never done a heavy band and see how you would do it. Now when I listen to the record, I mean, it's like thunder. Here we go. Yeah, it's for the kids, you know, that's what we write it for, for the youth that dig aggressive music, whether it's aggressive rock, aggressive rap, or they just, they need that element, you know? Pretty on the same level. Same it's level. Kind of, like, as I, as I said before, for me, like, like rock and roll, what it did for me when I found it is that it kind of, like, spelled out things that I felt for a long time mm -hmm. but couldn't, like, put my finger on. Yeah. So, like, I'd listen to, like, you know, Pretty Hate Machine for the time I'd be like, yeah. it's a great cut my chest out and yeah. spelled out everything I felt in it. What is your opinion of the music scene today and like how you fit into it and how it's progressing in general? As far as the music scene goes, I mean, we've never literally thought of ourselves as in any scene. Uh, every time someone tried to pigeonhole us, they really couldn't. What we do is perform live, we're a live band. What we do is tour. Mm -hmm. What we do is sincerity, try to put out good music. And uh, we refuse to do anything that's going to be pigeonholed. And uh, it's another form of sincerity that really holds, holds us strong, man. It's Very what's important. held us strong for, for five or six years, and I think it's why just the fans that we have take to us, I guess. <laughs>